um, let everybody know on Facebook that we are live and we're getting ready for block um, 49 and 50, which is amazing. We're officially at the halfway mark. While I wait, giving Facebook a few minutes because it still hasn't showed up. Hmm. Should see it. Let's see. There we are, everybody. Um, all right, give me a second to, I'm just doing a little bit of work on one on block 50, just to make it a little faster. I hope everybody's having a good week so far and that everybody had a great weekend. Um, we've been doing a lot of unpacking in the shop. We've gotten so much fabric, it's just crazy. I mean, really crazy. I'm amazed at how much fabric is coming in. Yes, I ordered it all, but we had such delays in receiving orders that now it's just like fabric overload. I've got so much in the shop that I feel like I've been doing nothing but unpack on boxes for weeks. And we're getting more and more surprise shipments, which are shipments that I know I've ordered, I expected them a while ago, and then all of a sudden, with no warning, they just show up. It's like, yeah, no, 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 okay. First things first, what do I want to say? Oh, we're doing a, virtual class on the two fabric for jello. So hopefully you can see this really well. It looks much harder than it actually is. And it's a yard and three quarters of your ombre fabric and a yard and three quarters of your accent fabric. And that includes, that will also be included in the border. The only thing it doesn't include is I did this one extra small border just to kind of break it up so that the accent fabric didn't touch, the accent on the border didn't touch the fabric directly in uh, the Bargello, but I figured I'd show you. So we're doing one class in class store. And I'm doing another class on Mondays online. And I will show you how to do it. It's really easy. Looks a lot harder than it actually is. The key to this one is you have to be organized. Whoops. As long as you're organized, it goes very easily. So I hope everybody is staying safe and not having any problem. Okay, let's get going. Whoops, move this out of the way. This is block 49. Get back here. If you get through all of these blocks, your piecing technique is gonna be so much better than without doing these blocks, because a lot of it is the same over and over. The blocks look different, but in actuality, the steps and um, 
where we piece the blocks is, is very simple. So we've got a big piece here. I've already connected all of these little squares and now I'm just gonna do these. And all I do is chain piecing them. Again, for those who do not know, and I'm using a scant quarter of an inch. Instead of cutting the thread now, when I've done those two, I'm just gonna slowly add in the next two to be stitched. And finally, the final two to be stitched. Does it save a ton of time? No. But over the course of one quilt, it saves enough time that every extra time that I can save, every extra minute that I can save, um, is all to the good as far as I'm concerned. Now, these blocks and the ones underneath go uh, opposite just like a kind of like a four patch. What do I mean? What I mean is it's like a checkerboard. So this is how you're gonna have it. What that means is if we put all of the seams ironed towards the darker green or the purple in this case, um, no, not the purple, I'm sorry, towards the darker green, it'll help with our lining up of our seams. And I'll show you what I need in just a minute. So I put the dark green square on top when I iron it. I got one piece that's not completely sewed through. Hold on. So it happens when you don't use your glasses. I sewed on one of the borders for that ombre quilt the other day and completely forgot, didn't realize that the bobbin ran out. So yeah, needless to say, I had to re-sew it again. All right, since I want all of my seams to be on this dark green side, when I start ironing and setting my seam, I leave that dark green on top so that when I fold over and iron it this way, the seam goes towards the dark side. Okay, simple, super simple. I've been loving seeing everybody's stuff, boats, and projects that they're working on. There's been a lot of people in here working on a whole bunch of stuff. Kind of cool when I get to see what you're working on. Now we've got three pairs that we've got to sew together. One more and then we can sew this block together. Ideally, if you were doing a lot of these, oops, a lot of these kind of like four patches with these two colors, you would just sew one long strip of each of them together and then cut them down to the correct size for the height of your pairs. And I just have to iron towards the dark side what hasn't been done yet. Go. Now we can line these up. So this top seam is going that way, the bottom seam is going this way, and they shall nest, which means they will butt right up against each other 
nice and easily. And as long as they're not bulky, that seam's not bulky, you know you're in the right place. And I put my, and again, this is all a lot of rehashing over and over again, but I figure it is worth repeating because it took me a while to learn and it makes it easier for me. So I'm assuming it's gonna make it easier for you. My pin's on an angle because I'm sewing from here down. So that means I can stop with my needle down right in the, the um, seam, seam before I take this pin out. And that has saved me plenty over the years because you spend all this time trying to line up the seams. And sometimes the simple act of taking the pin out is enough to mess up the seam alignment. As you can see, I don't pin very often, but with my seams, it's pretty much a given that it really is worth pinning. Got one seam here that's not quite right. Oh. There they are. And we're just going to line up this one on top and sew it away. never want to sew over pins ever. I know years ago we used to do that, but nowadays it's just not worth either breaking your machine, have the pins bounce back and ricochet on you. I've seen people get hit in the eye. It's just not worth it or spend a lot of money trying to fix their machine after a needle has broken inside. Here we go. Let's see how well I did. Ah, not bad. Only one is slightly off. No, I guess that's good. So now I'm just gonna iron this and then we'll sew it to the white part, half of the block and the block is done. Now remember, when you use a scant quarter of an inch, there's a good chance that the blocks are gonna be bigger than we actually want them to be. I'm not gonna tell you how big, because uh, you have to buy the pattern, but that's perfectly fine, because you can square them up and cut them down and they'll be perfect. But rather than being slightly too big, then not big enough. And make sure when you, you, know, you take your time going over these seams, I mean, it's a great cult to learn from and to master your basic skills. You've spent all this time trying to make your seams nice and neat. You don't want your seams to start going wonky in every which way now that you're sewing the block together. So just take your time, stop if you need to, Use a stiletto to make sure that the seams go under correctly so that they stay nice and neat. Okay. There it is. That's block uh, 49, sorry. Okay. Oh, I'm just gonna iron that, square it up. And that's another one done. Okay. Now we've got some flying geese again in block 50. 
I've already done one so that, um, what is going on? <laughs> Something. It's not quite that, but I guess so. <laughs> Oh, I see what's going on. Okay, never mind. Um, so I've already sewn one of the flying geese together, and now I'm going to show you two different methods of doing this. I always start on one side, the same side, when I've got flying geese in the same quilt or especially in the same block, and then I sew the other side because it just, to me, looks neater. And once in a while, if you don't do that, you will be able to see the difference. So the first time I'm going to show this to you is we've actually draw a line on the back of the fabric square from one corner to the other and I'm going to stitch, stitch just a thread width on this side of the line so that once I iron it up I have the beginning stages of my flying geese. The next part is I'm going to show you without drawing the line. All I'm doing, following that line. Now we just iron this up, cut off a quarter of an inch eyeballing it from that stitch line, this bulk part. Some people do not. Um, cut off that excess. There are times when I have dog, um, dog ears that I do not cut them off, but on flying geese, you don't have to, but I have found in my experience, keeping that extra bulk isn't necessarily good. And with these fabrics being separate pieces, you do run the risk of them moving underneath your stitch line, so I just find it's easier just to cut it off. Okay, now for this second one, I am going to place it where I need it. And I know if I start stitching right in that corner, and I keep this point right on my center line on my um, So Steady Grid Glide mat. I don't have to draw a line. Like I said, does the line do it take the time that I've taken to draw the line make a big difference? No, but if I'm doing a lot of these, yeah, it could save me a minute or so. And I'm going slow because this machine is one of the things with brothers and baby locks. Sometimes in the beginning, which is another reason why I chain stitch a lot, um, it wants to suck the beginning corner of the fabric into the plate of the sewing machine. And I find when I do chain stitching, it cuts down on that issue a lot. It's just a cork. It's like any other cork in any machine. Once you figure it out, you're, it, you're golden. And it's not a big deal. You learn how to work around them. So there it is. Without drawing the line, all I'm gonna do is iron this over, cut off the bulk, and then we can start putting this block together. But by chain stitching, that does help that one little problem. There we go. So now, and these are going this way, by the way. All right, so let me think. Yes, I'm gonna sew these two together. And I know a lot of this is repeat, but I'm gonna say it anyway. On this flying geese, okay, your seams, your stitch line go right here, 
and right here. So if I stitch and make sure I stay on this side of that X where it meets, not over here, but on this side, even if it's just, a, you know, if you're stitching a quarter of an inch seam and you have to shorten that quarter of an inch to a scant quarter of an inch real quick, just one little blip here, just one little part, and then go back to your quarter of an inch. What that's gonna do is it's gonna make sure you never cut off the points on your flying geese ever. I know it's it's probably one of the hardest things that it takes a while for people to learn, but once you learn it, it's it just makes it so much easier. So I always make sure when possible, as much as possible that I can see that X when I'm stitching. So I make sure I am not going to stitch beyond that point. Okay, so hopefully you can see that I have not stitched below that X. What that does is, voila. You have a tiny eighth of an inch space up here, but you have not cut off your point. Nothing worse than doing all of this and then cutting the point off of your braid or your triangle. And they're all, it's the same no matter what type of triangle you're working with. It's a very easy thing to figure out. Now, what I'm going to do here, let's see, we can sew this one together. All right. Now I'm going to sew this one here, then sew this one on, and then this one should fit next, and the final one will be up there. Kind of almost like you're doing a log cabin. Same idea. Where you're doing one, then the other, then the other, then the other. Exactly what you do with a log cabin. Log cabins are not hard, but for me, they're kind of tedious. I, they're not, not my favorite quilt to do. By the way, the two fabric Bargello is already on the website for purchasing. You are going to do it by Zoom. And I will be right here to stitch it right along with you and show you every aspect that you need. And I will be happy to answer any questions or problems that you have at the time of the class. And you will have access to that video for one week after the class. But wait until you see how easy it is. As soon as you sign up for the class, you will get the, the uh, pattern. Bubble. Just a little bubble. See here, I tell you not to cut your corners off and your points. And I did it. Ishka bibble. See, not I'm I do not consider myself an expert. I hate to use Jack the Ripper, so I try very hard not to use them and do it right the first time. But it happens to the best of us. Okay. 
Here's one. All right, there's one. Now we're going to do two. This one, I have the seam going towards the white. And on the top one, I have the seam going towards the green, which is just going to help me line up the seams nicely. Not that there's a lot of seams on here, but Once in a while, my machine likes to be difficult. Here we go. Woohoo! I like it. Now, if you have any questions on that um, by, uh, two fabric bar jello, I mean, um, just give me an. Send me an email or a message. I will be happy to help you out. I really like it. It's like one of my favorite Bargellos because it's really easy. And it doesn't need a lot of fabric to do it either. There's nothing that says you can't make it bigger, whether by a decorative order or using more fabric and doing more, do a duplicate of the Bargello lightning bolt that we do on it and put two of them together. There's no reason you can't. You could even add another fabric to your accent fabric and just put another piece Kind of where I did, instead of doing, um, see how I did the black border? You could put another piece of fabric on your accent fabric before you start cutting it up. And that would be just one more part of the lightning bolt. There's a lot you can do with it, but it's fun. It's easy. I like easy. That's like my favorite thing. It looks like I did a ton of work, but it's easy. That's what I call a win. Okay, now we've got the final piece. We've got just this one here that's going to line up. So let's see. I'm going to have to change where the seam is. Even if your white part of your seams, the neutral part, do not match up, that's fine. What you really want to make sure is anytime you have a color, that that seam lines up. Because that's what's going to be noticeable. Nothing else will be noticeable. 
all the white on white and the creams and the neutrals in the background, if those scenes don't line up perfectly, it's fine. Nobody is really gonna notice that, but they will notice the colors. We are halfway done. Can you believe it? Whoops. Wrong one. Block 50 of our 100 blocks. Now, I know this might not be everyone's cup of tea, but if I give you one or two tips that make your sewing better, your quilting piecing better, by all means, that's all I care about. But I think we're going to have fun on the next part when this is done and we actually do the quilting because I'm really looking forward to that. So there is block 50. My, my seams lean uh, line. Bleh. My seams line up really, really well. Nothing looks out of place. And here is block 49. All right. That's all I have for you today. Um, yeah, I got a ton of fabric. I do need a ton of fabric. I've been putting it on the website. I'm almost done. I think I've got a couple more, uh, one more big line and then a couple of small miscellaneous folds, but then the, all the fabric will be online. If you have any questions on the two fabric bar jello and you want me to help you pick out fabrics, that's fine. We have a ton of ombres that are appropriate for this. If you have ombres at home, the um, ombre has to go from salvage to salvage, which means it's going to go start off dark. It doesn't have to exactly do this. You could have a rainbow ombre, which is different colors all the way through. But most of them will have like a dark on one salvage, then it'll go lighter to the center, and then it'll go back to the dark on the end of the salvage. Just so that you get an idea what kind of ombre you need. Doesn't have to be that one specific. It can be a rainbow ombre that goes throughout from salvage to salvage, but that's what you want. It's a yard and three quarters of the ombre and a yard and three quarters of the accent. If you want a little bit of extra something, um, the small border that I put on before my accent fabric is only five, two and a half inch strips. So you really don't need a lot of that. Uh, if you don't wanna do that, that's fine. You don't have to either. The yard and three quarters and the yard and three quarters also include the border. All right. All right, you know where I am if you need me, everybody. I hope you have a great day.